Now, new alleged details about sexual, or rather details about alleged sexual misconduct by a Catholic cardinal who was a power broker within the church. Theodore McCarrick was removed from public ministry last month, making him the highest ranking Catholic official in the U.S. to be removed for sexual abuse of a minor. As John Yang tells us, a new investigation finds other offenses and church officials allegedly covered them up for decades. With holy oil, you will relieve and console the sick. You will... Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was long one of the most recognized faces of the U.S. Catholic Church. He led the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. and participated in the funeral mass for Senator Edward Kennedy. McCarrick became an influential voice at the Vatican and was among the cardinals who elected Pope Benedict XVI. In the early 2000s, Pope John Paul II asked him to help manage the devastating sexual abuse crisis. He was one of the drafters of the Charter for Protecting Children that was adopted by American bishops in 2002. I think when you look at zero tolerance, now I'm saying this, the other bishops aren't, I'm saying zero tolerance prospectively, everybody's on the same page. If this ever happens again, that's it. McCarrick was the public face when the U.S. Council of Bishops issued its report about decades of abuse by priests. Here he is on NBC's Meet the Press. Do you believe there's a special place in hell for men who represent Christ on earth and abuse their flock? There is certainly a special terrible judgment on, on someone who would abuse the trust that a priest must have, that a priest does have. But McCarrick's own behavior became the focus last month when he was removed from the ministry. The Archdiocese of New York said an accusation that he had molested a 16-year-old altar boy nearly 50 years ago was credible. McCarrick denied it. Now there are more allegations. The New York Times reports that beginning in the 1980s, when McCarrick was a New Jersey bishop, he inappropriately touched young adult seminarians. The newspaper said church officials knew of the allegations as he rose in the hierarchy. McCarrick declined to comment to the Times. The Reverend James Martin is a Jesuit priest and editor-at-large of the Jesuit magazine America. He joins us now from New York. Father Martin, thanks for being with us. The New York Times reported that the first documentation they see of a complaint that the Catholic Church was aware of, church officials were aware of, was, was in 1994. How could these allegations have been around for so long and yet uh, Cardinal McCarrick rise in the church hierarchy? Uh, that's a very good question. I think you're talking about the allegations about him uh, towards seminaries and priests. I think essentially uh, priests were probably embarrassed to come forward and uh, former seminarians embarrassed to come forward. And it is shocking to me that these uh, allegations have been around for so long. It's really pretty mystifying. And let me also ask you about the difference between the, the, the sort of the swift action once the Archdiocese of New York uh, deemed credible the allegation about uh, abusing an altar boy uh, many years ago, and yet the the slow action or the inaction uh, on the uh, allegations about adult seminarians. Well, another good question. I'm not a lawyer, but I think you know one is technically illegal. Uh, it's a crime, uh, and I think that sort of puts into place the um, reforms of the Dallas Charter, where the person is immediately removed. And I suppose these other things, uh, these other uh, accusations took a while to be unearthed. But what happens in terms of the Dallas Charter is that once there's any credible accusation of child abuse, you are immediately taken from ministry. It's, uh, there's, there's no questions asked. Uh, what's the church's attitude or how do they view allegations about adults? Well, it's a very serious matter. It's not only, uh, you know, a grave crime against somebody's person, right? It's, a, it's an abuse, an emotional abuse, sometimes a physical abuse. It's also sinful, and it's also uh, breaking the uh, the promise of celibacy that you have uh, as a as a priest. So, in multiple ways, it's wrong. Father, one of one of the targets of Colonel McCarrick told the Times that in the corporate world, there's a human resources contact. contact. He said, "Does the Catholic Church have that? How is a priest supposed to report abuse or wrong activity by his bishop?" What is their stated vehicle for anyone to do that? Should there be a vehicle within the Catholic Church for that? 
Well, and that was part of the problem, that the bishop is the highest person. Certainly an archbishop or later a cardinal is, uh, is on the top of the food chain, and it's very hard to level an accusation against that person. Uh, the nuncio, uh, who's the Vatican's representative in the United States, uh, is the person that you would go to. Uh, but as we read from the New York Times uh, yesterday, there was uh, one Dominican priest, Father um, Boniface Ramsey, who did go to the nuncio and was apparently uh, either ignored or the nuncio didn't believe him. So that process also failed. Father, I think one of the reasons why so many people are, are surprised by these allegations is that he was so uh, out front on the, uh, the abuse scandal against children, uh, and yet this was going on, or at least the allegations were there against him. What do you make of that? Well, that people are very complex, and I guess he was able to compartmentalize his own uh, misbehavior and abuse, and somehow, I'm assuming, uh, think that the child sexual abuse has warranted different punishment, but the idea that someone who was himself behaving improperly with people would be in the forefront uh, is, it's frankly mystifying to me. So it, it just, again, shows the complexity of the human person and the complexity of sin, too. I think that the most difficult thing for me to fathom uh, was how the, uh, these situations had gone on for so long, even before he was Archbishop of Newark and Washington. That was really stunning to me. Do you think there is more to this in the church uh, with uh, adult seminarians? No, I don't. I think that uh, Cardinal McCary's case is really extraordinary. The idea that he would have a, a house uh, on the Jersey Shore and, uh, you know, sort of bring people there, I think that's very unusual. I think that is in any organization, I think there are abuses of power and even, um, you know, imp improper sexual advances. But I don't think this is rampant. And I think his case is really uh, kind of an outlier. At least I would hope so. Uh, but is there anything the church can learn from this? I think that, uh, you know, we need safeguards for adult abuse as well. I think it's, uh, you know, very much similar to the Me Too movement uh, and sort of encouraging people who might feel uh, unjustly ashamed or embarrassed to come out and talk about these things, uh, even when it's someone in power. And, uh, and the other thing we can learn is that, uh, you know, no matter how good or how, uh, you know, productive a person is, there's always that chance of sin in a person's life. Reverend James Martin, editor-at-large of America. Thank you very much. Of course.